fluids 25 and this one's connected. We actually got two similar questions. And I think we've covered this question before on office hours, but I'm going to go into it again today. Um, it connects to fluids 25. It also connects to systems 25 and I'll read both questions and then we'll talk about it. So is it okay to use the equation circled in the pick attached for this problem? That's this guy here NPSHA, and this is for, um, this is, I'm going to refer to this as the design version of the NPSHA formula. It differs slightly from the one you used. Yeah, it does differ from the one I used in the video, but seems to lead to the same answer. It should, it's, it, it is ultimately the same thing. So yes, is the short answer to your question. This is from the manual. Is there any situation where this equation does not work? I think the second part of your question is referring to this other equation in the manual, which is still NPSHA and it's different. And your question is, I think what you're driving at is, can we use this other one? Are they the same? When do we use which one? So hold that thought. And then the second question is more directly asking that very thing. How do you know when to use MPSHA with the losses term, which is the design version versus MPSHA for the existing conditions, which is this one. So we have design, existing conditions. So how do you know which one you're dealing with? Well, it depends on the information that's given. And maybe we can draw a little picture and kind of annotate this. Okay. So let's imagine we have a tank. And that tank is, maybe it's an open tank, maybe it's a closed tank. Let's draw it as a closed tank this time. And it's got some water level in it. And there's some pressure above that which I'll call H P for now. Don't get too attached to subscripts. We'll talk about those. And then coming down out of that tank, we're gonna feed a, pu a pump. And then there's some height that we can define from the center line of that pump up to the top of the water level. We'll call that H Z. And we wanna choose an equation that's gonna account for what we know. And from a design perspective, we can't know exactly what the pressure is gonna be at the inlet of, of the pump because we're only in the design stage until we actually build it, install it, and put a pressure gauge on it. I'm not gonna be able to tell you what that inlet pressure right here is other than to measure it. Of course, measuring it is the best way, but if we're just doing this on paper, if we're just doing this in theory, there is no gauge doesn't exist in the real world. So that's why we use this equation that is made for design. So HP then is whatever the pressure is that's pushing down on the top of the water. If it's an open reservoir, an open tank, and that would be atmospheric pressure, and that term would become exactly the same as this HA. But if it's a closed tank and it's pressurized, then maybe that HP ends up being something greater, right? Maybe there's a compressor that's adding additional pressure above and beyond. So that's the first term HP. And we can predict what that'll be because maybe that's gonna be controlled or maybe it's gonna be open to the atmosphere and we already know that. So even when we're designing, we can specify that. Same with HZ, we can say, all right, let's have the pump be below the tank by a certain amount so that we get that additional head, that additional column of water sitting on the inlet of the pump. And if that's insufficient, we can make the pump lower or the tank higher. We have the opportunity to make those changes. We can control HZ. The vapor pressure is a function of the temperature of the water. That appears in both equations, so we need not distinguish that. That's in both. But either way, we'll be able to find that. And then the losses, we have to take a shot at what that's going to be. We have some length of piping that's going to go from the tank to the pump. And we know the size, and maybe we know the volume flow rate or the velocity. We can understand what those losses are. If there are any fittings in the way, we can account for those and we can quantify HF. So this is the formula that comes up more often. I'd say three out of every four NPSHA, NPSHA problems are of this design flavor. And those are the things that you need to be able to account for. So what changes that would have you use the other equation? This is the existing conditions equation. And the answer is it's already built. So instead of telling you 
all this other information about what's happening way upstream on the source, on the suction side. We don't care about that because we have a real measurement at the gauge at the inlet of the pump. So we can disregard everything upstream, which is why the losses term doesn't appear. And the HZ term doesn't appear because it doesn't matter if there is a height of a water column sitting on the left side, the impact of that is measured by this gauge. So HF and HZ go away. And what are they replaced by? They're replaced by HS, the measurement at the gauge locally. And the only thing that that doesn't account for, that's only static pressure. A gauge can't pick up velocity pressure, has no way of doing that. So we also need to add a velocity term as well. And that's where V squared over 2G comes from. And that's why that's included. HA is atmospheric pressure. And I'll distinguish that from HP in the example where we, in, in the previous, in the design where that was, um, it could have been closed and it could have been pumped up to higher pressure. In, the case, in this case, because HS is already the gauge pressure, the only thing that's not already accounted for in that is the atmospheric pressure, right? As we all know very well total pressure equals atmospheric pressure plus gauge pressure. So if HS is, is a gauge, is measuring the gauge pressure, we've got to add 14.7 to that to get the total pressure. And these two taken together are the total pressure. And that's it. Again, the vapor pressure is analogous to what it is in, in the design version. And um, that's just based on the temperature and a lookup in the steam table. So good question. It's a question that's come up before. Um, you may want to go back into the office hours archive. I, I think that was a pretty sort of thorough overview, but if you feel like you still have questions, go back into the archive and, and see the way this question has come up in the past. And um, if this question leads to more questions, then feel free to ask a follow-up, but I think this should more or less cover it.